What's good, math family? In today's video, we're gonna look at four examples on how to complete the square, and the last two are gonna be special cases. When we're trying to complete the square, math family, two things we need to do. One, lead coefficient needs to be one, and two, we need to create a perfect square trinomial. So when we look at this first example, right, we have the A term, B term, but we're missing that constant term. For us to figure out or to complete the square, we're gonna take half of B and then square it. So what happens is we have X squared plus eight X plus some C term is equal to 180, right? So half of eight is four, four squared is 16. So remember it's an equation, meaning what I do the one side, I need to balance it out by doing it on the other side. So this is why you see me adding 16 on both sides. Now at this step, we created a perfect square trinomial. Now we're gonna simplify and break it down to its binomial. So what does that mean? Just take your B and divide it by two. So we know this trinomial comes from squaring X plus four. And this is equal to 196. Now at this step of completing the square, this is when the square root method factors back in. So if we want to get rid of this exponent so we could solve for x, we're going to take the square root and we're going to do so on the other side. This cancels out. We're left with x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 196. And if I'm not mistaken, this is 14. So now to solve, we're going to get x absolutely by itself. So x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 14. So now we separate these equations x is equal to negative 4 minus 14. We know x is equal to negative 18. First answer. Second answer, we know x is equal to negative 4 plus 14, and we'll say x is equal to positive 10. So this is our first example on completing a square. Now our second example is different because we have to move c over. So my first thing I want to do for this problem is add 165 to both sides. We should know we can't factor this using the regular factoring methods. So now I have x squared minus 4x is equal to positive 165. We're gonna follow this same formula, right, so that we could create the perfect square trinomial. So when I rewrite this, we have x squared minus 4x plus whatever we complete the square with, and we have to make sure we add it on the other side. Family, you don't have to put this. This is just to let you guys visualize and see what we're doing. So half of two, four is two, two squared is four. So we're gonna add four on both sides. Now we break this down to its binomial, right? That binomial that we multiply by itself. That is just X minus two squared. Just divide B by two if you forget. And that's equal to 169. Back to the square root method, right? Get rid of the exponent by taking the square root on that side. Do the same to the other side. So now we have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 169. That is a perfect square. It's 13. So now we have x minus 2 is equal to positive or well, plus or minus 13. I don't know if I said positive or negative. All right. So now we go ahead. x is equal to 2 plus or minus 13. So now, right, when we split this equation... And, oh man, I don't know where I put my eraser. All right, let's just do this real quick. All right, now when I split my equation, we're going to have x is equal to 2 plus 13. So we'll get x is equal to 15. Or we'll have x is equal to 2 minus 13. And we'll get x is equal to negative 11. Family, I'm sorry I jumbled this up. I, I don't know where I put my eraser. All right, so now we got those two done. We're going to go to the last part of this video where we see the last two problems and you definitely want to see these because you're going to see them on the EOC. In problem number three, we are now dealing with a problem where we do have a lead coefficient and we know it has to be one. So first thing we want to do, let's divide everything by two, right? So now we have x squared plus three over two x plus we're going to have our C is equal to 135 over two. Now remember, first to complete the square, we gotta take half of b and square it. So when we do three over two divided by two, right? 
That just turns into three over two multiplied by one half. That's going to give us three over four, right? Square it, we get nine over 16. So when we complete this perfect square trinomial, we're going to add nine over 16 here, and we're going to add nine over 16 on the other side, all right? So now that we got that, we're going to say to ourselves, hey, what was the binomial that got us there, right? We should know it was x plus three over four squared, right? And this is equal to, and what we're going to do with this problem right here is we're going to multiply both top and bottom by eight. So we have the same common denominator. And if I'm not mistaken, 135 times eight. So this is going to give us 1080 over 16 plus nine over 16. So when I simplify one step further, we have X plus three over four squared is equal to 1089 over 16. So now at this step, we already know we're, we're back to the square root method, meaning I'm going to take the square root of both sides, right? We go to the top. Now we're left with X plus three over four is equal to what? The square root of 1089 divided by the square root of 16. Luckily for us, these are both perfect squares. So, all right, keep going. X plus three over four is equal to 33 over four, which is the same thing as 8.25. So we're gonna switch to 8.25. So now X is equal to, oh, well, hold on, I'm sorry. Plus or minus, plus or minus, I did forget. So now that we know that, right? X is equal to negative, three over four plus or minus 8.25. Now we go ahead and separate this and I'm gonna turn through before to a decimal cause this is easier to work with. So we have negative 0.75 minus 8.25, right? So I know X is equal to negative nine. On my second one, we have X is equal to negative 0.75 plus 8.25. And X should be equal to positive 7.5. So when we're dealing with lead coefficients and fractions with completing the square, perfect example of how you're going to solve. And now we're going to go to the very last problem of this video. In our last problem, what they want us to do is to take the quadratic equation from standard form to vertex form by using complete the square. And the way that we do this, or the best way I'm going to teach it today, is let's just section off the A term and the B term for completing the square, right? So let's say we know the B term is four, right? So four divided by two is two, two squared is four. So now I know the perfect square trinomial is X squared plus four X plus four. Now the difference with this formula or format, right? Is that the equation is gonna say Y is equal to. So when we balance it by adding four here and adding four on the other side, that's going to be a little bit different. And for me teaching it, I want you guys to treat what's inside the parentheses and outside is different. So what do I mean? So now we bring this plus one down and whatever we add in here, we want to balance this equation by adding or subtracting it out here. So if I added four here, I'm going to subtract four on the outside to balance the equation. Now, the issue is you may not see it as four. You may see it as B squared. What does Peters mean? Remember, this is the product of B divided by two squared. So this is really two squared. So if you see it as two squared, just understand it's the same representation. So now we break this down to its binomial. We have Y is equal to x plus two squared, right? And then on the outside, plus one minus four. So now we combine that, we're gonna have y is equal to x plus two squared minus three. And this is our answer. So if Peters, the EOC, SAT, ACT said, hey, right, they're asking for the vertex, we now know that the vertex is gonna be at what? negative two 
negative 3 because you know the vertex is a combination of H, K, right? Exactly. So really hope this video on completing the square was helpful for you guys. Smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below if you guys had questions on this video or if you have questions for future videos on our channel or if we need to double down on the topic. Thank you guys so much for watching Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.